and welcome to a new episode of Duel Series. Today is the Duel Series number five and we have a very special guest, Joel from Sweden. Hi Joel, welcome. Hello and thank you. Joel recently won an RCQ in Sweden and he's here today to challenge me and to have a, a good time with us. And Joel, could you tell us where was that RCQ? And when it was? So the RCQ, well, let's see, almost two weeks ago, uh, the 24th of September. And it was in Eskilstuna, uh, like medium-sized town for Sweden, so a small town for anywhere else. And how many players were, were that day there? 25, I'm pretty sure. It's really cool. And and we heard also, like, you kind of like it, the RCQ experience, and you were the next day also playing another RCQ after qualifying. Yeah, so yeah, I wanted to... The, the second RCQ was in my now hometown, so and we very rarely have competitive tournaments here. So I really wanted to go, even though I was qualified from the day before. And it was a good time. That's really nice that you are supporting the, the community and going to as many tournaments as, as possible in paper. You are everywhere, I would say, in the paper scene in, in Sweden, which is really much appreciated. And could you tell us a little bit about uh, the deck of choice for the RCQ you play and qualify? Yes, I chose to play Blue White Hammer, and it's a configuration built by Travis Brown, Disgruntled L, on Magic Online and Twitter and stuff. And he has a lot of resources for this archetype and helped me learn a lot. I picked it up this spring, and it's been my go-to since then, and doing okay with it. So it was the deck I was most comfortable with, so that's the one I chose for that reason. Oh, that's really awesome. They say in modern, you always take a deck, get familiar with it, and that's the most important thing for the format. So I guess you you agree with, on that statement. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's good if it's okay in the meta too. And I think I I was a bit scared that people would have moved away from Merktide into more like Leyline binding decks, but on the day it was like a quarter Merktide players in the room, so I was very happy to see that. Wow, that's that's awesome because I think Hammer has a very good matchup against uh, Mortide, so I'm really happy that you could leverage on that meta, local meta, and and get the qualification. That's really excellent and really looking forward to play against this list. And later maybe we can also add in the comments of the video some links to the player. You got the decklist from and all these yeah, uh, yeah, resources. Sure. I'm sure that many spectators will be super happy to read that. And yeah, I think we can move to the action part. If you are feeling like we can yeah. start to play some magic. And just to remind to the spectators what is dual series, we play here seven rounds of magic or seven games of magic. In the first three games, we play without sideboard. And in the last four games, we play with a cyborg and it's best of seven. So that means that in the moment that one of us will reach to four, we'll be the winner of this uh, dual series five. And I'm very much looking forward to, to play against you. Uh, so are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go for it. Welcome to the first round of this dual series five. We are playing against Joel. And we are playing Rhinos. We are playing today Mars Flats because we needed to lend the deck to Joel. And there was a couple of fetches that we didn't have. So Mars Flats was just a patch. I hope it will not be that big issue. It's substituting one added Mesa. And also the second Mars Flats that I'm playing is substituting one white and green fetch. So that's it for today. Joel is making a Maligan to six. Let's see if they decide to play something. Okay, I guess that's fine, right? We are not going to spend the Force of Negation into a run. Maybe they will play a Creature for zero now. In order to get some mana, they pass the turn. Oh, that's a very nice draw. So what do we want to do here? I guess we want to get a green source. So will be this one. Pay to life. Yes. And we pass the turn. Okay. Fortune. Yeah, I think that's fine. Stoneforge Mystics. Probably they will play a hammer or cast a hammer. 
tapping the drum. I guess that's what we're going to see. No, it's a Caldra. Okay, wow. They are going for the real thing. Caldra is really good against our Rhinos, so I hope we get another white card or we will be in serious trouble. Hmm, interesting. Let's put the Trium into play and let's pass the turn. We need blue mana. The fact that we have the Mars flat didn't allow us to fetch properly into the green and blue. This shows how important is the fixing and the mana basis. All right, I think we will go for Jorion, Jorion, Kaldra. Next turn, we have our suspended Rhinos in 2-3. They attack for 5. We are at 12. No joke. Okay, for 0. And I guess we... Hmm, I guess we need to play Sacred Foundry or Voseyus. I don't really know what is the best option here. We want the Voseyus for later to interact with a hammer or something similar. So we might just play the Sacred Foundry, pay to life and get our Yorion as the turn. When are we getting our Rhinos? Still two turns to go. It feels an eternity against such a fast deck as theirs. Esper Sentinel. Okay, that resolves. Probably they will start to do some hammer action. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, the attack with these both. Let's play this and get rid of the germ. Okay, they gain five lives. If that's relevant, I don't think so. Three cards in hand. Let's see what comes. Or two. Wow, Paladin. Yeah, I guess that happens. So now they can start to keep Caldra 4 0, which is really a nice. Oh, they equip there in the Sentinel. That's not so good for us, to be honest. I guess there is no way we can really come back from this game maybe we try to do some rhino action but it's not going to be enough i guess crossing footfalls entering we cannot pay six so they will draw a card and then we have some creatures in the battlefield and we pass the turn. Is they have a hammer now? SDGs. They do, so we can see it. <laughs> GG's. Alright, game number two without sideboard. We are on the play and we are facing Joel with the hammer. I think this hand is pretty decent. We need just one land more to make it perfect, so I think we are going to keep it. It's absolutely fine. They go down to six again, trying to find probably a, a good hand. That's something we, we can ask later to Joel if they mulligan to find like the best hand or it was that he was having some issues and really curious. Now they go to five. That's unfortunate. I guess we will fetch into Trium. Mm, 
we need white and green, right? What is the triangle that gives white and green? It's this one, green data, we pass the turn. We fetch to Hollow with Fontaine, get to damage, and Figardas aid. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, Ornithopter. Anything else this turn? No. Okay, we play this, and we have some Rhinos to suspend, and we pass the turn. Ultra Saga. Let's see if we see some hammer action. Okay, Stoneforge Mystic. Guess that's fine. They will go and find hammer, I guess. Caldra, okay. So maybe they have the hammer in hand and they are, like in the previous game, trying to create some situation where it doesn't matter that we deal with the Caldra, they can have hammer and any other. So I guess here the best thing we could do is probably sending back, is sending back the Saga, the Ursa Saga with the fairy or using the player. I guess we will use the player. Yeah, let's use the player, I guess. So, footfalls. And we put the player here. And we are going to do Solitude now into the Stoneforge Mystic. And if they play Hammer, okay, they play Hammer into the Ornithopter. The only problem will be if they have double Hammer. That will be really bad for us. But I doubt in three cards that they have Kaldra and the double Hammer. That will be too much. And then if they play one Hammer now, we can bounce the Ornithopter and we are good to go. Another Mystic, yeah, another Stone for Mystic, they're probably going for Hammer. Yeah, they go for Hammer. Okay, we are going to attack. And I guess we have to bounce the Saga, because if not, they are going to have double hammer. And one time, it's okay, we get damage, but two times, it's not that good for us. And we got uh, Plia, which is yeah, Plia, a force of negation, which is really nice. And now they cannot cast the, the hammer as instant speed. Okay. Then we are going to do this 100% for sure. I thought they were going to use the stone for mystic, then put in the ornithopter and we were really in a bad situation. I guess they will have to kill the ferry, okay. We are in a bad situation anyway. <laughs> now I see, and later they can come with with the Kadra. This is such a beating, crazy. 
the good thing is that they couldn't play it as in the instant speed. Now we can play some Rhinos to block. See what we get. Another land. Not really helpful. Let's play this here. And we are going to hit with one Rhino. Yeah, we are going to hit just with one. And we are going to take Yorion into our hand. And we pass the turn. I guess they will have to cast Caldra. Oh, so play Caldra and, and don't all oh, land. This changes everything. This changes everything. Okay, it's per Sentinel. They will cast Caldra and attack with everything. Ah, with the Sigarda they can attach the, the Caldra to Ornithopter. <laughs> That's really brutal. Yeah, I guess we, we lost this one. Okay. They put it there. What is a 6-6? Six, six. Yeah, there is nothing we can do. We just concede. Bye-bye. <laughs> wow. What the two first games that has been <laughs> really a beating. 0-2 for Joel. And things have to change a lot if we want to do something here. All right, so here we are for game number three against Joel. Joel playing Hammer and we playing Jorion Rhinos. This hand is a keep. I guess we will go for blue green. Breeding pool, suspending crashing to footfalls and passing the turn. Halloween Fantine. See what will come. Sigarda. I guess we are going to force this. How so we use ice and force later on. Let's use ice, I guess. I'm fine, the result is. Okay. Let's play this. Pass the turn. And in their upkeep, let's play white. So planes. And then use eyes here. And now it's our it's their turn. Let's see what follows. In moth. Okay. I guess we are going to play the ferry and bounce the cigarda side. Here, what do we need? Maybe double blue will be good for us. Yeah, let's do that. Or shall we use the plea? Yeah, let's use the plea. We need to put some pressure here. We can the ferry later. Or just the ferry with the solitude or the force of negation. Casting footfalls. Let's cast it. And then we will pass the turn. Let's see if they will cast end of turn a hammer. No, they don't. Okay, Sentinel, fine. They play Hammer. I guess we let it enter in the battlefield and then we Solitude. Okay, 
less solitude now. And let's pass the turn to us. And then we keep open a force of negation for the rest of the game. Well, now that we get this, I think we got, we have still yeah white white blue and we can go for Jorion. Do we wanna go for Jorion? Yeah, I guess we can go for Jorion. Yeah, let's go for Jorion. with Fontaine, yes, and then take this and attack with everything. Planes, let's see what they find. That Immod Nexus is really concerning. Okay, Stoneforge Mystic, that's fine. And now they will go for Hammer, I guess. And maybe they, they play it now to attach to the Stoneforge and being able to block. I don't know. Or they wait to our turn. That could be another option. Maybe waiting to our turn is the best play. Because they force us to use the force of negation just like that. Okay. The problem will be, yeah, of course, if they play it with the Stone Force Mystic and put it into their land, that will be GG's and they can do it at the combat. Maybe we should have we should have Use the. Um, we still have used our force of negation versus the Sigarda. That could have been probably the best play. And now we play. We pay to prevent them throwing a card. Hmm. I think. Playing the player will not change much. If they have another land, they can do the Stoneforge Mystic into Hammer. Then we are having a problem because they activate with the other land the Inmood Nexus. Let's see what happens. If there is other land I ought to concede. <laughs> yeah, another land. And we can concede, I guess. They are going to do Stoneforge after activating the the Nexus. Okay, activate Nexus. They will attack, and then in the combat phase, they will. Put the, the hammer into it. Oh, they cast it instead of putting it with the Stoneforge. Then, I mean, we take this opportunity. Absolutely no problem. You can. Maybe they have to. Maybe they have to. That's why they do this. Because otherwise, I don't understand it. They might have to. No. Okay. The Cigarda 8 is saying whenever an equipment enters the battlefield. So, okay, we could have. Activate the Stoneforge. That's unfortunate. Okay, now for Cyborg, we are going to take all our anti creature things and I will put also the Teferis out, probably. I will put the Teferis out. Yes, all out. Two Force of Negation, the Endurance. We'll go out for sure. We want Onnath or one Borrow. Maybe Onnath. Borrower. Nah, Borrower, I think it's the card. 
Okay, hello and welcome to the game number four. We are in post cyber game and this hand is full of hate. I like it, so we are going to keep it. Joel Mulligan's 2-5, second time in these games. Probably trying to scull perfect hand. Okay, they keep five. Planes. Okay, Spur Sentinel, pass the turn. Oh, Rhino, Rhino, Rhino. Maybe in that case, we are going to play Temple Garden and suspend the crashing footfalls. Pass the turn. They will attack. Okay. That's fine. Will they play La Vigna? Wow. That's hard. <laughs> nice hate card. Okay. I guess we are going to play Mars Flats. We are going to pass. The good thing of La Vigna being played is that, okay, it's a fair card. We don't have pressure, we have a lot of land, so probably that Fury, we will hold it there and play it later. And that Saga, maybe we can destroy it during combat phase. Okay, Sigarda I8, that's a problem. Let's see if we see a hammer coming over. That might be the case. Okay. Well, let's play a tap land. I want red mana, so that will be the Rogin Triumph. Very interesting. Let's play this here. And I guess we want to do a tier into the saga with this. They activate this. We still have done it in their turn, by the way. Uh, would you like to pay one to prevent their drawing? No, I don't want to pay one. They produce one mana. Okay, that's fine. Will we see a hammer? Pass the turn. Pass the face, sorry. Reality chip. Okay, that resolves. And where will you attach it? There. Okay. And what we are going to do is to fetch and get red mana, I guess. And we are going to play fire here. Pass the turn. Now they have the reality chip. As long as the reality chip is attached, you might play land and cast a spell from the top of your library. How far we are from the rhinos? Bit far. Okay, another cigar that's it. On the top of the library or from the hand from the hand we are going to take our jorion 
and you see it display flooded the strand take the Orion and we pass the turn go to a keep and use the Orion to play solid it here we don't want them to play cards from the top of the library and now with the fury we can kill the reality chip hmm next was was very uncomfortable and for two pure steel paladin okay we are going to do triumph here triumph and i guess we are going to play our fury although we will get into the risk that if they draw uh, stoneforge mystic they can destroy us maybe we don't play the fury now we will play it after we play now solitude i guess that's better i don't know man now nah, let's deal now with the with the paladin i mean if they draw the um, the stoneforge mystic good for them what can we do let's use here the fury and pass the turn and later we have otawara and solitude ready to interact if we need to they have now their window if they have the hammer they win they have the hammer no man no they have the hammer amazing really amazing really really amazing oh man that's so stupid and so bitter from our side ggs 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 <laughs> All right, we are in game number five. Is three one for Joel. This is the probably final game if they win. Maligan here, and this one we are going to keep it. We have some tools. I guess Serless Agent. One will go. Keep this. Yeah, let's go. And we will start with Mars Flat into Triumph Hmm, Giver We are going to play the Raukrin Triumph, I guess Yeah, Raukrin Triumph Next, then it's our turn And here We are going to play the Flooded Strand we're going to pass. Okay. Lavinia. That's a problem. That's a big, big problem. We can go and kill the Giver of Runes. That's the only way if later we get fire eyes or something like that we can deal with Lavinia Lavinia is really good against us really really good okay try on and it's our turn it's a good card but no for now Play this, we take Jorion. We might need to need to cast it. Good thing is that we can cast Force of Figure in the next turns. Four four. Planes 
Don't force me to stick, okay. Caldra. Caldra without solitude is impossible to deal with. Play this. <laughs> and I guess I will play a Sardis agent just to stop the bleeding. It doesn't make too much sense, but we just go and play it. And no, we don't cast the food fields. We just play this and pass the turn. Okay, Caldra, it's coming into town. Hmm. Well, we have to pass. Only something like Otawara could save us. Okay, that resolves. Now, Imod active. Or they will attack and then use the Stoneforge Mystic for putting a hammer. Okay. I guess I have to do this and this. We have another hammer. It's completely beating us. For one, congratulations, Joel, for a beating. Let's go to the interview. So congratulations to Joe, our winner of Duel Series 5, 4-1. That was really <laughs> something. You beat us really hard. Congratulations, Joel. Well played. Hey, thanks. Well played, you too. Yeah, I haven't played this matchup before, so I was a little bit scared. I think the matchup usually is much better than this, but the first two games, they felt unreal. I mean, like you had everything. And the yeah, way you I... were uh, sequencing, like with the Caldra in the hand, but having the inevitability of having one or two hammers in the hand, that was really brutal. I mean, there was no way I could really play around that. I know exactly what you were doing, like pay, take my attention into the Caldra, and then you were going to come with the hammers. I I saw that coming, but I could do nothing. Just just wait and see how you how you kill me. Yeah, yeah, I think I got a bit lucky, especially my top decks, and I, I had pretty good hands. I feel like I mulligan a lot with this deck. It's like every other game is like five cards, but then again, this deck can win on five cards, like I did one game, I think. So it's yeah. good. Uh, I mean, you accept some variance with this deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was something like we wanted to ask you one of the first questions we were commenting during the games, like you were uh, mulliganing a lot and I was not feeling sorry for you because I was not feeling you were being unlucky necessarily. You were trying to sculpt your hands in a way that they were really good hands. So was that really the case that you were searching for the perfect hand or some functional hands rather than just making some random um, keeps? Yeah, more functional than perfect, I would say, yes. This deck, it contains a lot of bad cards. It's a combo deck to begin with, like a combo aggro deck. But you won't win the game with like two Ornithopters and a Springleaf Drum with this deck. So the hand needs to have some kind of plan to do something that's actually good in modern. So that can be like equipping a hammer, of course, or having a Caldra, hopefully with protection. Or like a super strong saga hand. Now I didn't have those kind of hands in those games, but they're an option too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I fully agree, and I think yeah the first the first games without sideboard they were they were really strong. There was a situation in in game three still without sideboard that I was about to concede because I know you have the hammer in hand. 
and yeah. uh, for whatever reason you decide to cast it instead of using the the stoneforge to put it in the battlefield and i could counter it so was there any reason to do that or you saw like okay there is no way i i lose this i just cast it and whatever so what was no, the reason I, I i think i should have just used the stoneforge to be to be fair i, I just missed that because there was no I had in my head some other lines where I could set up some blocks, but mm. they wouldn't have been good enough because I, that hand was really stacked on white cards. I had like two paladins and another stoneforge. So, but your ice on turn two was super, super good against my hand. So that basically ruined the entire game for me because I couldn't sequence and play all my white cards. Probably. And yeah, sorry, sorry. Please go ahead. No, but but I should have just activated the Stoneforge because that was like one out less for you with a force negation. That is correct. Yeah, I guess Ice is probably one of the best cards against you because we need some time to do our thing. And for having a tempo card like Ice, it's, yeah. it's all we want. You also are very mana efficient. You utilize almost all the mana every single turn, and that's that's really good. What was yeah. really unusual is there was no single game where you did the Saga game, or there was no single game where you used the Pure Steel Paladin to do the thing. Well, there was one where you use it with the card. Yeah, yeah, the, the first game, right? Yeah, or one of the first games. One of the first games, but I mean... I'm very used to, to lose to that card when yeah. it's about the hammer, so I'm very surprised that in, almost in none of the games you were using it. So as hammer player, what is the percentage, let's say, of games that you need the pure steel paladin? And are the games that we were playing like the normal games that you have? I think maybe I got like slightly luckier than normal, but I also like I had Turn one, Cigar to say it, almost every every peak of board game, I think. And and like I'm I'm mostly gonna keep a hand that has either aid or paladin. And in this case it what it was aids. In some other games it could have been paladins. Like the game I lost, I had the paladins, but they were too slow. Mm -hmm. I mean paladin is like the best card in the deck. This deck would have would not work without either of those two cards. And when you get to, especially like post board, no, 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 sorry. When you get to play a Paladin with an equipment in play and force your opponent to remove a creature that is getting equipped, and then you can just re-equip it to something else. That's like, that's the ideal scenario to win. Mm -hmm. And especially against like Merktide that has damage based removal, you can often try to work against to reach that position. Because like against Solitude decks that they're just gonna if they have removal for your first equipped dude, they're gonna solitude your paladin and then that falls apart still. Mm -hmm. But against damage based removal, paladin is like so strong. And especially if you get to suit up the paladin after combat and it's like at twelve twelve or bigger. And it's going to be really hard to remove. Yep. So that's often the plan against Merktide. Mm, really, really good. Really good. I think uh, that card is, is super good. But talking about really good cards and disrupted cards and broken cards, let's, let's move to the sideboard and let's talk about your strategy, but especially about the queen of this matchup that was Lavinia. I mean, it was so... Yeah. so... Yeah. Annoying and broken. We could do almost nothing when Lavinia was in on the table. How how do you sideboard and what do you think about this card? So I board in all Lavinias and I board in some Blacksmith skill and one Teferi and out with some of the uh, zero drops because we need more uh, better cards after board. Lavinia Lavinia is super good and I I think like actually having Lavinia in the board is like one of the biggest reasons I love this deck because I think Lavinia, especially with this aggressive strategy, is super good in modern. There are so many strategies to try to cheat on mana or play stuff for free and Lavinia just, just nope. 
You can't. Yeah. And especially when it shuts down your interaction, not even your unfair stuff, like your rhinos. Uh, I I can beat your rhinos, but if you can't have solitudes and furies and your ley line binding and stuff, that's the real win. Especially like Force of Vigor. Making that cost four is mm, that's really good. That's really good. That's, that's also something funny, now that you mentioned Leyland Binding, I just remember that we play that. We haven't seen a single Leyland Binding no. in the whole no, game. No, I thought so. about it. Where's the bindings? <laughs> but yeah, because I was a bit scared of playing out my Cigarless Aid early, because yeah. I think, I think like, against Prismatic Ending decks, you sometimes want to keep them, just to not get the Aid killed. And I, I've considered the same against you, but then my hands kind of needed to put the aid in play early just for the mana situation. So I, I, I didn't have the, the time to play it later, I think. And that's, I think, a problem with the Rhinos deck for me. That, like, against the four-color Yorion the elemental stuff, you can play a little slower. But the Yorion, uh, or the Yorion Rhinos, puts pressure on me. So I can't just, like take the time to play around everything, I have to choose the right amount of aggression and the right stuff to play around, and that's that's one degree harder. Very good, very good. There was many situations with the Avignon hand that I have, yeah, <laughs> solitudes and furies and all type of things, but I cannot play it, Just especially in the last game. My hand was stuffed with a lot of answers, but I couldn't yeah. do... Anything I so could tell by the stops good. that that, that Lavinia was a stop. Yeah, that, that was that was really hard. And there was also a game that I think I make a risky choice that was I think was the game five or I don't know which one it was. That I know if you draw uh, a hammer I, I lose. But I wanted to do the, the Fury anyway yeah. in that turn. I had a I have a hand with, with Solitude. I have a Solitude, a land that was an Otawara and the Fury. So I guess that was really bad play. But the, what I wanted to ask you is, did you have that hammer in the hand or did you throw it? And I know it was knew it was on top because I had the reality chip. Ah, okay, you could So So I, I could have held the Paladin, but I, I yeah. thought like, let him think this is important. And next turn I try to go for the Ink Moth kill. And if that if that doesn't work, it, nothing will work. It's too late by then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. I... So the so, the solitude would have been super good. 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 Okay. Yeah. That 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 game. I really felt like I took some unnecessary risk doing that, and and that was this kind of place that you do, and immediately you regret it. You think like, okay, if I could go one second back, I will not do that play. And yeah. I got severely punished, but but that was good. That was good. I think that was the only game where I felt I could have done different to win, but the rest I felt really like useless. Like <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do, I, I'm going to lose. So that's the power yeah. of Hammer. It, it hit yeah. me so hard. And it's risky to let me on tap too, because you know, if you you see in my list, you know I play four blacksmith skill. So. If you let me have another card and have the mana back, maybe your removal won't work. And then I have the Paladin in play. So I can see your line as well. Yeah. Hmm. Very good. Very, very, very good. And what was your your favorite game or the one you, you would like to highlight because you felt you especially played good or that you like it more, the, the game plan from, from all of them? I think the two pre-board the two first pre-board games, because yeah, they were more like my deck doing my plan, not just Lavinia being awesome. So, so this like back and forth with like threatening with the Kaldra and then going in with hammers, I think that's it's a good showcase of what this deck can do. So I really like those as examples. Good, and for all these. Hammer fans at home enjoying with this brutality of the deck, destroying the opponents. What message will you send to them? Is this list the definitive list, or are you seeing some gap for improvement moving forward in the next meta? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's really 
really hard. I, I've been playing this kind of list for like half a year now, almost. But uh, there, this is not like the super stock blue white hammer. That one has a spell pierces main and then mana leaks in the sideboard, and also I think yeah has sanctifiers in the sideboard as well. So so th there are some slight differences. I really like this one. Mostly because I have the sideboard guide and it's it's convenient for me and I don't need to think by myself all that much. But I, th I think you can play this deck in a lot of different speeds and you need to build the deck according to how you like to play it. I like this pretty aggressive approach with the five zero drops. I have some blacksmith skill main, Giver. I, I really like Giver. I think it's really good especially with Stoneforge and Caldra plan. So Giver could go down in value now with the Leyline Binding. Because in the past, you needed to protect like against Solitude mostly. That was like the main threat, I would say. And Giver is good at that. But the Leyline Binding can just take the hammers or Cigar Sates instead. So Giver, I think Giver is still good, but it's maybe not as good as I've felt it to be so far. Okay. Good. But okay, good. there's there's a lot of variations. Like I haven't even tried mono whites, and I want to try that something sometime. Okay. Good. Good. Very good. So if somebody wants to propose a a mono white list for for Joel, I feel feel welcome. And yeah, do it. I'm just not gonna play eight zero drops. Never. So <laughs> don't don't even try. Don't even try. That's good. And also using the power of the media, I know you are. a big, big, big signature aficionado, and you are trying to oh, yeah. complete your Hammer signatures. So is there any card in particular that you're having more problems to find? And maybe somebody if is listening to this or watching this and they have it and that they can reach to you, which one would be? It would be Sagas, mostly. And secondly, the Vincent Pros cards, Ginger Brute and Color Complete. I think Almost everything else I have on the way. Okay, that's that's impressive. I think maybe you can post someday some of the pictures in, in your Twitter account for the people yeah. to, to watch. I mean, when the deck is as complete as possible, it for sure will be there. And and for those that want to follow you in the media, where, where can they find you? What is the best way? What is your Twitter account or, or what is the best way to, to engage with you? Oh, let's see. I don't even know. What, what am I called on Twitter? <laughs> uh, I think just Joel Greenhead. Okay. We will put in the comments the... Yeah, Joel Greenhead 92. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Then we will we will share with the audience. And then if somebody wants to say hi, they can always do it through that yep. channel. Always welcome to chat or something. I like I... a lot of decks, so... Yeah, that, that I can tell. He's a very friendly guy and always ready to have some nice games. And he likes diversity and he loves to try everything. So uh, don't don't be shy. Challenge him. No. You will enjoy it. Do it. Good. So congratulations for uh, winning this uh, Duel Series number five. Um, really very well played. And especially congratulations for your qualification for Sofia. Uh, I think this is a very special tournament for you and for all the Swedish community. There is a bunch of uh, players that are going with you. So I wish yeah. you all, all the best, a lot of success. And well, let's see if we can bring you very soon to do a series with another RCQ qualification in the future. Yeah, I'm happy to be back. And thanks for having me and inviting me here. It's I really nice, really like your project with the dual series. So I will for sure check out the the older ones as well. Awesome. Then we see each other very soon. Thanks for the games and all the best success. See you, Joel. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.